Okay. Hello everyone. Today we're talking about babies because I had a baby. Wow, so exciting. This is my first baby. Thirst. This is my third baby. My first baby while teaching was VIP kid. When I started back in 2015, my no middle child was six months old and I felt like he had a good enough sleeping routine that it was probably okay for me to add a job and teach for just a couple hours a day before he woke up in the morning or after he went to bed at night. And so I had never done the maternity leave. Don't wake up teaching while pregnant thing before. So this was my first go around. So I'm going to tell you guys all my tips and tricks, things that I did to make this an easy transition, both leading up to having, having the baby and afterwards now that baby's here and things are 10 times crazier. So the big mystery is how long should you take off? That's totally up to you, but give yourself that buffer beforehand. So two weeks before my due date, I started my maternity leave on the leave tracker letting students know I would not be opening my regular slots starting at that day. That doesn't mean I stopped teaching on that day. I'm a little bit of a stir crazy person and it would be hard for me to just not teach for two whole weeks if I didn't have a baby here. So in the morning, I would kind of say, hmm, do I feel like I'm going into labor? Probably not. And so then I would open up slots for 12 hours later that evening. And that evening I would try and think, how do I feel? Nothing's really happening. So then I would open up slots for the next morning. So just short notice, 24 hour availability bookings. And I did that for basically a week and a half, almost two weeks, I think, opening up those slots just 12 hours out so students could still book me and then you can keep teaching. You're just maybe not going to get all of your regular students. I had a lot of trial students there at the end. The main thing you don't want to happen when you leave or stop teaching for any period of time is that your students forget about you. So you don't want to leave for five, six weeks, whatever it might be, and come back and have your schedule empty and have to totally start from scratch again. So let's make sure that doesn't happen by communicating with the parents. So before you even set up your leave tracker, maybe you just found out you're pregnant. Wow, so exciting. Start telling your students. It doesn't have to be a large monologue in class where you go over all of your infertility. Here's a stick that I peed on, all the details. You don't need that. But tell them, I'm gonna have a baby. I would show my students my growing belly and they would obviously see my widening face. It was very clear to them at some point I would be leaving. I would let them know in class, just little reminders here and there leading up to it. And then in feedback, especially as we got closer to my due date, I would remind the parents, I'm going on maternity leave soon. So exciting, I'm having my baby. So there's always this open line of communication and it's not a surprise. We want to avoid the surprise. So let's talk about physically in the teacher's portal, what kind of buttons do we have to push? Where do we have to go to make sure VIP kid and the parents and the students, everybody knows we're leaving for a while. All right, so let's set up our maternity leave in the teacher's portal. So go to your teacher's portal, you're going to click on class, and then the first drop down is bookings. Go there and that's going to show you your weekly schedule. This is the page I use the very most in the portal. The button we're looking for is this orange one up here which says change availability. So click on that and you're going to choose the start date, maybe we'll do today, and the end day for your maternity leave. There's no right or wrong amount of time to take off. I gave myself two weeks before my due date and then a month after the due date for about six weeks altogether, but you can choose whatever you want to. So we'll just put that there. And then you're going to give the reason that will be displayed to the parents why you're not there. So obviously today we're doing maternity leave, but you can use this for other things also, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going on vacation or I'm sick, just personal reasons. Please don't ask for details. Uh, maybe we have a natural disaster or if there's something else, then you can type it in here. Like I'm just sick of teaching or whatever you want to put. But not today, we are talking about maternity leave, burnout will be another video. Um, but don't forget, this is super cool at the bottom, they're saying you can always re-edit your submission. So this is not set in stone. Just pick some days that you feel like are generally going to be long enough. If your baby comes early, then you can always extend this longer. And if your baby comes late, you can change it to be later, or you can just leave it and enjoy your little vacation. And then at the end, you'll click submit. 
I'm not going to submit this one because my maternity leave is over. But I did this a couple weeks ago and you'll see after you submit it, it puts this little uh, icon thing, you know, this little picture by each of the days to show you're not there. So even if you forget like, oh, how long is my maternity leave again? You can just check this here and you can see, oh, that's right. Nothing's happening those days because I'm not teaching. Now, that doesn't mean you can't teach those days. If you change your mind and you're like, wow, my baby is late, which was the case for me, all of these days that I actually was supposed to be on maternity leave, I still taught. And so that's always an option. If people are submitting booking requests, then you can come in here and just say like, ah, fine, all right, baby's not here. And as we talked about before, you can just open up those slots 24 hours in advance or even 12 hours in advance. If you're like, hey, I'm not really feeling like I'm going into labor, I'll just open up some slots tomorrow. I'll just open up some slots tonight. And you can keep going back and forth, as you can see I did, right up until my baby came, which was on the 24th. So um, my parents actually came a couple days before that, so I had a little window where I didn't teach at all, and I didn't have to deal with any of the soft cancellations or any of that hassle. Now you should keep checking your booking requests, which you can do right here in this booking request tab. If it has this little red icon, it means somebody is requesting a class with you. So even when you're on maternity leave, come in here periodically and check this out. And maybe you're like, oh, sweet Nina, how many times have I told you I am having a baby? So we will decline this and you can tell them why you want to decline. Look at all of these reasons. Yikes. So sorry, I have plans to travel elsewhere at this time. Eh, probably not relevant to us. Sorry, I have other work related commute. No, baby's not really work related. It is work, but we're not going to do that one. Sorry, I have other urgent matters that require my attention. That's a possibility. Um, I'll be attending a wedding. That's a no. I'll be dealing with a personal matter. Yeah, that one's definitely true. I have a family matter. Yes, possibly. I'm not available. Yeah, that one's also true. Medical appointment, maybe C-section. I am never bill, no, and I'll be paying my respects, no. So every time I got a booking request I, during my maternity leave, I would come in here and click one of these. I never really could decide which one was the most relevant for having a baby. I think something like an urgent matter that requires my attention would be the equivalent of having a baby. But nonetheless, click one of those, and then at the bottom, you can say, hello, Nina. And just write a quick message to your student and really to their parents because these comments will be shown to the parents and say something like, thank you so much for submitting or for requesting another class with me. As you might recall, I am having a baby or I had a baby last week or I'm having a baby tomorrow, whatever it might be. And so I'm not available for class, but please check for me after my maternity leave ends on such and such a date and I will be happy to book a class with you. So um, again, don't ignore these booking requests. Just check it every couple days, every week or so. You know, you'll get a little notification on your phone saying you have a booking request and you have, what is it, like 24 hours um, to respond to them. So I guess check it more than once a week. You might miss some here and there. But um, even when I continue to tell and tell my students and parents about my maternity leave, um, they keep sending booking requests. So, you know, the nice thing to do is just to respond to them, tell them why you're declining, and um, just, again, keep reminding them I will be coming back after such and such a date so that they do keep looking for you. The last thing you want is to come back and all your booking requests are gone. Sad day. Um, so that's the way that I would handle those booking requests and your maternity leave within the portal. If you have contact with parents through WeChat or any other Facebook, Messenger, whatever way you might communicate with parents outside the classroom, feel free to talk with them there as well and you can send them pictures. Afterwards, I sent baby pictures to some of the parents and just let them know, still alive, still here. I might not be in class as many hours every day or any hours a day, but I'm still alive and coming back coming back. I planned out and told my students I would take about four weeks after the baby came that I wouldn't be teaching. And at that point, I felt like, okay, you know, I'm at week five now. I could probably add a couple students back. So I'm teaching maybe a half hour in the morning and a half hour at night. You might not always be able to get morning and evening slots. That's the case right now. In the summertime, that's also going to be the case and during Chinese New Year. So there's different times when that can work out better for you. But 
nonetheless, whatever the situation is, you are likely going to be able to open up a half hour and really short notice is fine. You don't have to book them three weeks out because maybe you're thinking, I don't know what it's going to be like three weeks out. But just slowly adding students back into your schedule is a nice way to work with baby schedule and all your sleepless nights and not overwhelm yourself. Don't come back before you're ready. Come back when you feel like maybe it's something I can handle. And again, just gradually add the students back in and that'll be the best way to maintain your sanity so that you don't fall asleep in all of your classes. Now, a lot of people really like teaching online. Um, especially with VIP Kid because that means they don't have to pay for childcare because they're already home. With a newborn, you really should have somebody else around when you're teaching. You don't want to find yourself nursing in class, trying to find a binky. How much of this can I do while holding a baby? One second, Bao Bao, let me just go run and change a diaper. not gonna be great for you, especially for your bookings. So make sure that you have somebody else to watch your baby when you are teaching. You've given them a bottle, whatever you need to do so they can take care of that and help you out. The parents pay for your full attention when you're teaching their students. So make sure that the student is 100% your priority when you're in class with them. And then after those 25 minutes, go back to having your baby, your very noisy baby being your top priority. Honestly, it's been so good for my sanity and my mental health to have 25 minutes. I'm goofy teacher Sharon, and then I go back to being mom again. Just know that whatever time period you've told VIP kid or the parents is your maternity leave is not set in stone. You can come back earlier if you want to. You can go back later if you need to. You can gradually ease in and ease out of teaching. Just communicate with everyone so they know you're not dead and you're coming back. That is your best bet to keep your bookings up. Keep responding to those booking requests and keep those lines of communication open. Your students will be there when you come back. If you liked this video, please subscribe to my channel. I have lots of other videos that will help you with tips and tricks to be a great teacher with VIP Kid. All right, thanks guys. Goodbye.